Alright, what's good, y'all? So today I'm gonna show y'all how to do this shockwave effect on highlight motion. It's pretty easy to do. And before we start the video, I just wanna thank y'all for 17 subscribers that we did a couple days ago. Um, I really appreciate it and, and I love y'all for real. So let's get back on the tutorial. So click on the plus and you're gonna click on that open circle like this now you're gonna edit shape and you're gonna click on closed Let's close the circle and you're gonna scroll down the end option just like this put it at like one degree all right now go on border and shadow and increase it increase it just like this now we're gonna effects right there Add a new effect now add an omino glass effect and chromatic bubble preset now copy my settings for the best shockwaves effect if you don't like my settings just do your own but Alright, so here's my settings. Bevo, I got 0.74. Refraction, I got 73.6. Chromatic aberration, I got 34.3. Feature size, I got 426. And smoothing samples, I got 6. And you'll add a new effect fractal warp. And you'll play around with the magnitude. And I suggest you to lower the octaves. So the distortion can be smoother, you know, just like this. Um, just make sure to not put it at one because it will just not distort at all. So put it at two or three, just like that. Now, add a new fig and search for a motion blur. Now you'll have to put the arc right behind the subject and place it where we can't see it no more, just like this. So now for the case of our subject, it's not really moving that much from the center of the camera so we won't have to track the arc behind him. So what we really have to do next is go on scale at a keyframe at the beginning and where you want the arc to spread spread out just like this and here you got your first shockwave arc now I suggest you to, to add some position keyframes to make the distortion displays a little bit like this so you can like a, a shockwave you know now put the motion blur down a bit if it's too thin for you for your taste just increase increase it in borders and shadow just like this and you still can make a transition of like making it disappear by lowering lowering down the opacity just like this now to add multiple other arcs, all you have to do is duplicate the same arc and move it forward in your timeline, just like this. And just do it over and over again until you're happy with the result. So yeah, this was um, the shockwave tutorial for the static subject, but for the moving subject, it will be a, a little bit trickier because uh, there's a lot of movements and all that. So we'll cover this next. But also, don't forget to cut all this excess right there. But, uh, you can do it just by select selecting them and just clicking on this button right there. And here we go, the excess is gone. You still can cut them like at the place where they're not like on the screen no more so you can save some data just like this and yeah up to 
the next clip. Alright, so for the second clip, the subject is moving a bit more. So first we'll add an arc and you will do the same thing that we did for the first clip. So now for the effects, all you have to do is like do like we did before. So now that you have your arc, we'll just put it under the subject as usual and just pl place it behind the subject so we can't see it no more. Alright, so now go to move and transform, click on the scale button, add a keyframe at the beginning and put a keyframe where you want the explosion to occur, just like this. As you can see, I didn't add the fractal warp. I just forget about it when I was pre-recording. So if I were you, I will just add the distortion right now. So now I'll go on position and add a keyframe at the beginning and play your video for a bit and pause it and reposition the arc to the center of his head and just do the same over the whole clip. So now as you can see, the arc is perfectly following his head and the motion of his movements. And you just can add a graph to your scale so it can be clean and smooth, just like that. Now I'll just add my fractal warp effect and my motion blur effect. I won't be diving too deep into it because I already showed y'all how to do it earlier in this video. So I'll just speed this part up. Alright, so if you don't like the colors, you can just add a new effect and change it with the U shift. Just by playing around with the colors and the wheel, just like just pick a color that you like the most and you can also change the colors with this effect called colorized just right there and you can change the color of the shockwave just by picking the colors you want in the wheel of this colorized effect but personally i'll keep it by default because i like it this way so now here's a crucial part so to add more shockwaves all you have to do is duplicate the arc layer and just move it forward a little bit but this is the tricky part so you'll have to select the second arc you just duplicated click on move and transform and on each keyframes you'll have to place your cursor in them and just reposition them uh, to the end of your subject just so it can be synced and i guess we could say tracked with your subject movements just like this as you can see it's clean and smooth and follows the subject movements and just do it over and over again it's, it's pretty simple but it is a time consuming task and it can be long if you have a lot of shop waves So yeah, here's how it look with three shock waves and as you can see it's not bad at all and I think I'll add just one more so it can be like more expressive. shockwaves like this and you're happy with your result just delete the, the extra that you have right there by selectioning your, your shockwaves and cutting the rest out so yeah that's about it thanks for watching this tutorial.